I pray now, God, against every distraction, every wondering thought. I pray, uh, God, for preaching power in this my weakest hour. I pray now, God, despite my faults and flaws and fatigue and frailties, that you let uh, favor fall fresh on me today. I pray that you would hide me so far behind the cross uh, that your people would not miss you by looking or listening to me. Uh, get glory in this house, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. While you're still standing, turn and say something nice to your neighbor. Uh, make them smile real big. Come on, one more time, one more time. Amen. Re let's remain standing. I want to get right into the word of God. Amen. The word of God um, today. Amen. Um, open your Bibles, and uh, if you have a Bible, open your Bible to the index, and in the index, go to the book of Amos. Amen. The book of Amos. Amen. Look in the index. If you have your Bibles, go to the index. I don't have all day with you. Find Amos. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you have your iPod, just turn it on. Amen. If you have a device, amen, an electronic device, and if you have the Message Bible on that device, go to the Message Bible. Amen. If you have just your regular Bible, listen, if you just have your regular Bible, amen, just look on the screens. Amen. Because I'm reading from the Message Bible. I say that because sometimes the translation are very similar. It's very similar, and you can kind of follow along. But in this verse, the translation is so different. Amen. You're going to miss something just by reading the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? So again, if you have the NIV or King James in the Bible, amen, if you, if you, when I read this text in the Message Bible, it's going to read so different, amen, that the key points I bring out, you're going to miss it. Amen. You can, you know, just want to give your heads up on that. Amen. Uh, Amos chapter 9, Amos chapter 9, verse 11 through 15. Amos chapter 9, uh, verse 11 through 15. And I'm reading from the Message Bible um, today. Amen. The message Bible. When you have it, uh, these words are recorded. But also on that judgment day, verse 11, Amos 9, I will restore David's house that has fallen to pieces. I'll repair the holes in the roof, replace the broken windows, fix it up like new. David's people will be strong again and seize what's left of enemy Eden plus everyone else under my sovereign judgment God's decree he will do this yes indeed it, it, it won't be long now <laughs> thank you Lord God's decree things are going to happen so fast <laughs> your head will swim one thing fast on the heels of another. It's so fast you won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, just blessings. Blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. And I'll make everything right again for my people Israel. Thank you, Lord. They'll rebuild their ruined cities. They'll plant vineyards and drink good wine. They'll work their own gardens and eat fresh vegetables. I'll plant them and plant them on their own land. And they'll never again be uprooted from the land I give them. God, your God says so turn to your neighbor look him or her in the eye and say neighbor God has favor for the faithful amen you may be seated in the very presence of the Lord amen favor for um, the faithful favor for um, the faithful us as you may be seated in the presence of the Lord for the last few weeks uh, as I mentioned a few uh, moments ago I, I preach from the same subject uh, and that subject was living in overflow and, and God uh, uh, asked or commanded me to preach uh, from those words uh, with the hopes that someone listening uh, would receive that message into their spirit and come to the realization uh, that God has more available uh, for those who would only trust and honor him. Uh, the premise behind that, um, that uh, sermonic presentation was um, to get it in somebody's spirit uh, that, that, that God has more in store. 
uh, that God has a desire uh, not to hold back blessings from you, uh, but God has a blessing um, to pour out blessings to you. Uh, in, in fact, uh, for those who are taking notes, there's a scripture I want you to write down. It's in Psalm 84, verse 11. And the psalmist says in the 84th number of Psalm, verse 11, uh, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. Uh, the Lord will give grace and glory. Uh, no good thing will he withhold from them uh, that walk upright. Uh, that shout at me because the psalmist declares uh, that God wants to give grace and glory. And in doing so, no good thing. Someone shout nothing, nothing. There's no good thing that God desires to withhold from the one that walk upright. That, that literally means, beloved, that God wants to position us to prosper us. Uh, last book, last week I read a book entitled The Blessings of Favor. The Blessing of Favor was written by a young lady by the name of Kate McVeigh. And in this particular book, Blessings, The Blessings of Favor, she defined uh, the supernatural influence on the person's life as being the blessings of God, uh, as being the blessings of God's favor. Uh, she, she declared uh, that this force that we have working for us, uh, this supernatural influence um, that does for us what we can't do for ourselves, she defined it as the blessing of God's favor. Uh, she was adamant in her periodical uh, that when a person has this thing called uh, favor uh, on their life, uh, that the only word that best uh, describes that person's life is blessed. She argued um, that whenever uh, God's favor is on a person's life, uh, that the one word that surmises that person's existence is, is blessed. Uh, that even if that person has faults, uh, if they've been favored, uh, that person is just blessed. Uh, it goes on to say that despite experiencing failure after failure after failure, uh, if God has placed uh, favor on your life, uh, regardless of your failures, your faults, uh, you are still uh, just blessed. Nudge someone and tell them, I'm just blessed. I'm just I'm just blessed. Be why? Because uh, the favor of God uh, is just that uh, is just that powerful. <laughs> uh, the favor of God is just that mighty. Uh, the favor of God, I feel like preaching, is just that forceful. Uh, the favor of God, it, it, it has that kind of effect. And, and when I think about uh, the favor of God in lieu of scripture, I discovered, Derek, that when you read the scripture, uh, you can learn at least three things about uh, favor. The first thing that we discover about favor uh, from the scripture is that favor favor uh, connects us to God's purpose. Uh, if you're taking notes, write that down. Favor um, connects us um, to God's purpose. Sometimes we, we struggle trying to find uh, the purpose uh, of our lives. We struggle trying to find exactly what is it uh, we should be doing. Who should we allow in our lives? Who should we trust and whom um, shall we talk to? It's all right to say amen. Sometimes uh, we struggle trying to understand God's purpose. Uh, we struggle sometimes trying to operate uh, in God's purpose because by my own admission, uh, sometimes God allows us uh, uh, to operate on levels we don't always occupy. Uh, you'll catch that when you get home. So we struggle uh, sometimes trying to understand what it is um, the purpose of God's will for our lives is. But uh, Psalm 90 verse 17, uh, it says these words. It says, may the favor uh, of the NIV, Psalm 90, 17, may the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. The summer says that when we have the favor of God, his favor goes to work on us, making sure that what we're doing is lining up with the purpose of God. I wish somebody was feeling me. That whenever, Glenn, we have uh, this favor uh, of God on uh, our life, some kind of way, uh, his favor uh, aligns uh, us. His, his favor uh, kind of like uh, puts us back on the right path uh, when we're going uh, astray. I have this feature uh, on the car I drive. It's a driver assistance feature. And when I hit this particular feature uh, on my car, uh, the car detects if I'm getting drowsy. I know it's crazy, but trust me, the car detects uh, if I'm getting 
getting drowsy. And if I stray off the road, the car automatically just kind of pulls me back on the right path and slows down. That's what God's favor does for us. Um, that when we are walking in the favor uh, of God, it, it, it's some kind of way. Uh, it connects us to whatever God's purpose uh, is. So when we have favor on our life, his favor makes sure we're in fellowship with the right people. Uh, his favor makes sure um, that we are allowing the right people in and out of our lives because the truth be told, everybody that looks saved ain't saved. <laughs> I, I guess I, I guess I'll preach in this house. His, his favor connects us to our his purpose because uh, there's sometimes the devil can satanically assign people unto uh, our life and they look like sheep and they behave like sheep but they're really uh, wolves in sheep's clothing and so uh, we got to have the favor of God on our life because the favor of uh, uh, God it connects us tell your neighbor it connects us it it connects us to God's purpose but then secondly uh, when you read the scripture I wish you would write this down not only does the favor of God connect us to God's purpose, the favor of God cancel things being plotted. <laughs> yes, it, it cancel things being plotted. Uh, Psalm 5 verse 12 says, For surely, uh, O Lord, uh, you bless the righteous. Uh, you surround them with your favor as with a shield. I'll read it again. Uh, Psalm 5 verse 12 says, For surely, uh, O Lord, uh, you bless the righteous. Uh, you surround them with your favor as with a shield. Uh, the psalmist compares uh, the favor of God uh, to a shield. Now, somebody should praise God right there because I'm suggesting that we have people in our life that despise the ground that we walk on. Uh, there are people in our lives that don't want us to prosper. In fact, um, they are plotting against us. While you're in church praising, they're back home plotting. Um, but we don't have to worry about their plots because the text suggests um, that God's favor can cancel things that are being plotted. In fact, no weapon formed against you is going um, to prosper. There are people that despise the ground you walk on. But you ought to shout because a favor fights on your behalf. Foes flock up against you but your foes are foul without you fighting because God has allowed favor to rest over your I'll try it one more time you have enemies coming up to despise you enemies coming up to oppose you but whenever God um, to me, puts favor on your life your foes will fall without you fighting because God has allowed favor to rest over your life I wish I was talking to somebody right now who can give God praise right there because you don't know who to trust you don't know who your enemies are uh, your enemies has laid traps for you to fall in. They throw rocks. They hide their hands. Uh, sometimes they pat you on the back looking for a soft spot just to stab you in your back. But the good news is God has a hedge of protection all around you. And if you don't believe me, you read the book of Job because Job declared, that's my testimony because the devil was after me. In fact, the devil testified that the only reason why he hadn't bothered Job earlier was because God had a hedge all around him. That's why I thank God for the parents and the grandparents I had because they grew up singing songs like Jesus be a fence all around me every day. I didn't understand it then, but now I understand that when the Lord Lord puts a hedge all around you. Uh, enemies can hate you. Liars can lie. Back throwers can, rock throwers can throw. But if God has you in the witness protection program, preach boy, there's nothing that the haters can do. Why? Because what God does is God allows us to have favor. Somebody shout favor. His favor, watch this, it connects us, amen, to God's purpose. Secondly, what favor does is favor, uh, it cancels things that are being plotted. But what I really love about favor is this third thing, because favor also causes things that to be possible. Are y'all getting this? Uh, favor, watch this, favor calls things that to be possible. Favor open doors uh, amen that we can't open our say I ran across a wonderful scripture Kim uh, it's in the book of Esther Esther chapter 2 sent verse 17 says these words it says now the king was attracted to Esther more than the other women and she won his favor and approval more than the other virgins so he set a royal crown on her head and made her head 
made her queen instead of Vashti. In other words, the text says that Esther was able to get stuff that everybody else couldn't get, not because she was more attractive, not because of that, but because he, God had favor on her life. In other words, she was able to be ushered into a place of prominence based on what God had placed on her head. Now, don't you look at me like that because you, if you are honest, got to admit that God has ushered you into some places that you didn't even deserve. And the only way you can describe it, it was favor. Somebody's driving a car bought on favor. Somebody is financing a house secured on favor. Somebody is sending a child to college right now, not on a Pell Grant, but a favor grant. There's somebody right now, uh, you're healthy, not because you got Medicaid or medical insurance, uh, but you're healthy because God has given your faculties favor because favor can create. Am I talking to somebody in this house? If you know without a shadow of a doubt that favor can do things for you that you can't do for yourself, can you just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, can I tell you the reason why I'm still here? I'm still here because God has given me something uh, that money can't buy, thieves can't steal, water can't drown, fire can't bury. God has given me favor. Someone shout favor. I feel like preaching in this house. And it is this last truism that favor causes things to be uh, possible and uh, that serves as the canvas that this text uh, is painted on today. Because when we look at this text, uh, we see this principle in operation. God, in our text this afternoon, he's getting ready to pour out favor. Please let me explain Amos because many of us are not familiar with the book of Amos. And when we read the book of Amos chapter 9, what we discover in this chapter is that God is getting ready ready to pour out favor. However, what the text teach is that everybody in this chapter is not going to get favor because God's favor is reserved for God's faithful. Okay, I'll try it one more time. All right, when you read chapter 9, God is getting ready to pour out favor. But in this chapter, Alonzo, everybody is not going to get favor because God's favor is reserved for God's faithful. That if you are not a part of God's faithful people, you will not partake of God's faithful provision, favorite position. Because God's favor is reserved for God's faithful. This was the message that God was giving. And Amos um, to give to the people of God. Uh, Amos, can the church shout Amos? The name Amos, it means a burden. Amos was suddenly taken from humble beginnings as a plowman, and he was given the burdensome task of being the messianic mouthpiece for God. Amos had no prophetic training. Amos didn't have any seminary training. In fact, by his own admission in chapter number 7, um, verse 14 and 15, this is what Amos says. Amos says, Kevin, I was no prophet, neither was I the son of a prophet. I, I, I was a herdsman. He says, I was a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I was following behind the flock. And the Lord said unto me, go prophesy unto my people. In other words, uh, Amos says, I, I wasn't a preacher. I wasn't trying to be no preacher. I wasn't no prophet. I wasn't a son of a prophet. I didn't have a dream that I was going to be no preacher. I wasn't aspiring to be no preacher. I was just minding my own business. I, I was just following behind my flock uh, and calling came after me. I didn't run after a call, but a call, I guess y'all ain't feeling me in this. Uh, I didn't go after the position, uh, but the position came after me. Amos says, I was comfortable being uh, a plow man, and God peaked me as I was plowing uh, and picked me to be a prophet. I'll try it one more time. He says, God peaked me as I was plowing uh, and picked me to be one of his prophets. Uh, and because Amos went from being a plowman one day uh, to being a prophet the next day. Uh, there were people that didn't receive his word uh, because sometimes when people know what you were doing then uh, and see what you're doing now, they don't really believe that you're actually called in the minute. I guess I'll try it one more time. Uh, sometimes when people know how you used to be and know what you used to do, I'll try this side. Uh, sometimes when people know how you used to roll and how you used to live uh, and they see you now, they don't want to believe that God is 
able because they won't never let you outlive your last label. Oh, every time they see, oh, he's in the choir now, but I remember when. Oh, she called herself a preacher now, but I remember when. But you know what? I don't care if folk don't let me outlive my last label because the last time I read my Bible, it says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Oh, I feel like preaching in this house. Oh, things are passed away and behold, all things are new now. So it's not what I did is what I'm doing. It's not how I was, but it's how I am. It's not what I used to sell. It's what I'm selling right now. It's not what I used to drink. It's what I'm drinking right now. Touch three people and say, I'm new, I'm new, I'm new, I'm new. I got the same mind. Can I say that one more minute? I got the same mind, but I'm thinking different thoughts. I got the same hands, but I hold different stuff. I got the same legs, but I stand different places. I got the same feet, but I walk a different way. I got the same tongue, but I talk a different talk. I got the same eyes, but I look at different stuff. I got the same, help me preach somebody. I got the same heart, but I love a different way. Oh, calm down, Pastor. Calm down. Here, here, here it is. Amos, Amos, Amos. He went from being a plowman one day uh, to being a prophet the next day. And to make things worse, God called Amos um, to prophesy to the nation of Israel when Israel had reached an all time high. Uh, Amos is prophesying to the nation of Israel when they had reached a peak. They had peaked in military power. They had peaked in material possessions. Uh, but they had also peaked in moral uh, perversiveness. One more time. They had peaked in military power. They had peaked in material possessions. But they had also peaked in moral uh, perver uh, perversiveness. Uh, in other words, on the one hand, they had reached fortune and gains. Uh, but on the other hand, they had forgotten their God. Uh, on the one hand, they had riches. Uh, but on the other hand, they had no right. Righteousness. On the one hand, they had uh, poverty, but pr uh, prosperity. But on the other hand, there was a lack of piety. And it is amid uh, this context that God calls uh, Amos um, to preach to his people because his people had uh, forgotten uh, God. Tell your neighbor on your left, don't you forget God. In fact, that's what God warned them. When you read the Bible, write this scripture down in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Um, verse 10 through 12 and um, God prophesied and God told them uh, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and um, verse 10 through 12 reading from the message Bible uh, he says when God your God uh, ushers you into the land that uh, he promised through your ancestors uh, Abraham Isaac and Jacob to give you he says you're going to walk please hear me church Moses said to the children of Israel verse 11 10 rather he says you're going to walk into large uh, bustling cities that you did not build. Verse 11, you're going to live in well-furnished houses that you did not buy. You're going to come and drink from wells that you did not dig. Vineyards and olive orchards that you did not plant. He says, when you take it all in and when you settled down and please and content. He says, verse 13, you better make sure you don't forget how you got there. Don't forget that it was God that brought you out of slavery. Tell your other neighbor, you better not forget. You better not forget. You weren't always driving what you're driving. You better not forget. You weren't always living. I guess I'll preach to the balcony. You better not forget. You were always li wasn't living like you're living. You better remember those days you were catching transfers from bus to bus. Remember those days you were catching the jitney. Remember those days you would look between the couch looking for some change. Remember those days you were drinking Kool-Aid with a little bit of sugar. Remember those days you were eating mayonnaise sandwiches. Remember Remember those days when spam was your best friend? No, not the computer virus, but real spam. You better remember those days when you didn't have much. And look at what God has brought you. That's why I can't understand how some of you bougie black folk can get in the church and sit down there on God praise. You better put those hands together and give God crazy praise. It's the Lord that's brought you. Can I preach like I feel it? And because they had forgotten God, I'm in verse 1, because they had forgotten God, God shows Amos another vision. 
Please understand, beloved, as I teach this text, that this is the fifth vision. Somebody shout the fifth vision. The fifth vision. It is significant uh, that this is the fifth vision. Why? Because uh, numbers are significant. I didn't say this at the earlier service. Uh, uh, one is the number uh, of uh, uh, unity. Two uh, is the number of division. Three is the number of, uh, of the trinity. Four is the number of creation. Uh, but five is the number of grace. Uh, it is significant that here five uh, is the number of grace. That this is the fifth vision that God is telling Amos that their grace has has just run out because you know what you can only take God's grace for granted for so long because the Bible says to everyone it has been given just a measure of grace somebody shout a measure of grace so God shows Amos this fifth vision and in this vision I'm in verse 1 of chapter 9 in this vision Amos sees the Lord standing by the altar in the sanctuary at Bethel stay with me I'm in verse 1 in this vision this fifth vision God shows Amos a vision of the Lord standing by the altar the altar beloved was where the Lord met the worshipers as the worshiper offered up prayers and praise the altar is the place where typically and traditionally uh, God met his people and his people met God but the altar at Bethel was a place where false gods were worshipped consequently when the Lord showed up he's not showing up at this altar to receive worship uh, he's showing up at this altar to reject the false worshipers uh, because the truth be told everyone that comes to church uh, is not coming uh, for the same a reason. God, I'm going to kill a devil right here. Please know it, child of God, that everyone that walks up in church on Sunday morning and declare, Lord, Lord, really don't serve the Lord, the Lord. How do I know? Well, the Bible says in the book of Job uh, that Satan goes to church. The Bible says in chapter 1, when the sons of God went to present themselves, uh, the Bible says the devil was right there in the mix. Therefore, God is not giving you kudos because you got dressed and came to church on Sunday morning because if that's all you've done at best you're on the same level as the devil so the issue is not coming to church the issue is what you do when you get to church you don't get any church you don't get any credit coming to the place of praise you only get credit when you open up your mouth and give them some praise you don't get credit for coming to the place of worship you only get the credit when you open up your mouth and give God some worship in fact am I talking to somebody in this house who says pastor Jackson I came for the right reason I didn't come to catch a man. I didn't come to get a number. I didn't come to get a hookup. But I came to worship the Lord. I didn't come to see who was sleeping with who. I didn't come to see what you had on, boo. I came because I've been catching hell all week long. I came because I've been drinking tears for water. I came because I need a word from the Lord. Am I talking to somebody who made up in their mind? I've been struggling all week long. And I can not wait to come to church to open up my big mouth to get Give my God some praise. Hey God, hey God. Come on, Terry, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Come on, tell me again. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. So if you don't want to see me, you may not want to sit beside me next week. Uh, uh, help me, somebody. If you didn't come for that reason, you may want to change your seat next week. If you didn't come to praise the Lord, if you didn't come to worship the Lord, if you didn't come to help me make a joyful noise, if you don't like me turning to my neighbor, well, then don't be my neighbor. If you don't like me talking to you, well, don't sit beside me. Because if you sit beside me, I'm going to be high-fiving. I'm going to be talking to I'm going to be yelling. I'm going to be running. Because if you knew the hell I had to deal with, if you knew the tears I had to cry, if you knew the stuff I had to wrestle with, somebody just got out of the hospital and you trying to make me hold my peace. Somebody just got out of jail and you're trying to make me hold my peace. Somebody just got out of trouble and you're trying to make me hold my peace. Somebody just got out of debt and you're trying to make me hold my peace.
peace. Somebody just stopped crying last night and you trying to make me hold my peace. Somebody just got their joy back and you trying to make me hold my peace. Somebody just got their child back out of trouble and you trying to make me hold my the devil is a liar. You can look at me kind of crook eyes if you want. I'm going to bless the name of the Lord. In fact, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be Man, it's almost one o'clock. Let me get to my sir. We got to go. Y'all sit down. I got to go. And, and so in this fifth vision, this fifth vision, he, he, sees, he sees the Lord standing by. He sees the Lord standing by the altar. But when Amos sees the Lord standing by the altar, he immediately knows that judgment was about to come upon the false worshipers in the northern kingdom of Israel. Here it is. God is getting ready to wipe out the northern kingdom of of Israel. And when you read verses 1 through 10, when you read verses 1 through 10, go ahead, sit down, baby. You're making me nervous. Just sit down. It's all right. And when you read verses 1 through 10, you're going to discover uh, that God talks about the fury being released on the unfaithful. Verses 1 through 10. I don't want to spend much time there, but in verses 1 through 10, uh, when you read it, when you get home, uh, he talks about the fury, the F-U-R-Y, the fury uh, for the unfaithful. And let me just sum it up. When you read verses 1 through 10, Kevin, when you get home, you'll discover that God says because they were unfaithful. I'm tired of dealing with them. I'm tired of wrestling with them. I I'm tired of trying to convince them to love me. I'm just going to wipe them out. Yeah, that, that, that's what the first 10 verse, he's, I'm just going to wipe them out. And then what he says, Hannah, is I'm, I'm going to wipe out everybody. And, and now keep in mind, he says, uh, because I'm going to wipe out everybody, uh, he says, no one can hide. Uh, in, in fact, uh, he says, look at verse number two. Uh, he says, some people will try to dig down to hell, uh, but when, when they get there, my hand will take them. <laughs> in the B clause of verse two, he says, some will try to climb up to heaven, but when they get there, I'll bring them down. Look at verse three. He says, some will try to go to the highest mountain but when they get there I'll take them out verse 4 some will even try to go into captivity but when they get there I'll command the sword to take them out there why because whenever God says you are cursed you're just cursed that whenever God watch this church would draw his hand off your life and leave you exposed your exposure will lead to your uh, being uh, exterminated that whenever God leaves you uncovered uh, your con your uncovering or being uncovered would lead to you being taken out so God says listen at my fury being released upon the unfaithful I don't want to spend time in the first nine or ten verses because prayerfully that's no one in the building but when you look at verses 10 through 13 God says this is my favor on the faithful someone shout favor when you read verses 10 through 13, God says that for the favor, for the faithful, I'm going to give favor. And listen that the three things that my favor will uh, encompass in their life. Uh, Amos says that, that the favor of God uh, will do three things. Very, very quickly. I'm running out of time, but very quickly. I want you to write these three things down because uh, the same favor um, that's on the people in the text is a prophetic word. It's a word that's coming to pass. It's the same favor, I believe, Renee, that will be on our lives today. Uh, the same favor um, that's in the text uh, is, I believe, the same favor that will be with us today. Amos says that God's favor will do three things. The first thing in verse 11 and 12 that his favor will do is his favor will rebuild the future. So just write that down, rebuild the future. God's favor will rebuild the future. Repeat that, say rebuild the future. Look at what he says. He says, verse 11, he says, also on the day of judgment, uh, after I wipe out the unfaithful, I'm going to restore David's house that has fallen to pieces. He says, I will repair holes in the roof, uh, replace uh, the broken windows, uh, fix it up like new. He says, verse 12, D David's people uh, will be strong again and sees what's left of the enemy plus everyone else under my sovereign judgment. Are y'all with me? 
Verse 11, David, the text says um, that David's house uh, is going to be restored. Look this way. Let me teach this morning. Uh, one of the things that happened during uh, Israel's captivity uh, was uh, the destruction of uh, the city of David and the Davidic monarchy. Uh, because uh, when the children of God went into captivity and the enemy invaded Jerusalem, uh, uh, they destroyed the house of uh, David. Now you got to understand, church, it's significant that David David's palace was more than just a house. Uh, David's palace uh, was a symbol of uh, hope. Are y'all with me today? One more time. When the people of God, when the enemy, mom, when the enemy invaded Jerusalem uh, and destroyed uh, David's palace, it was more than just the destruction of David's palace. It was the destruction of hope because David's palace was not just a house. David's palace was a symbol of hope. The people of God God knew uh, that the Messiah was going to come through the lineage of David. And so if there was no Davidic lineage, then there would be no Savior. And if there was no Savior, then there would be no hope. And if there was no hope, then there would be no future. Gosh, y'all ain't feeling me. If the house of David was not restored, if the Davidic lineage was not rebuilt and put back together, then there would be no hope. And if there's no hope, then there's no future. So when God says, I'm getting ready to rebuild, to repair, and to replace the house of David, uh, consequently what he is saying is, uh, I'm getting ready to restore hope in a hopeless situation. And if you have a hope, that means your future is secured. Listen, you miss your chance to shout because what I'm trying to say is uh, that God's favor uh, is rebuilding your future. In fact, turn to somebody close to you and tell a neighbor, God is concerned about your future. You see, the Israelites needed to hear this. The Israelites needed to hear this prophecy because, watch this, they were cognizant of the fact that their captivity caused their, uh, their captivity was their cause. The Israelites knew that their future was being forsaken. It was their fault. And because it was their fault, they feel as if there's no hope for the future because God shows up. God lets them know that even even though you have some faults, my favor will cover up your faults. Now, I know that there's somebody in this house, you can't really appreciate this point because you act like you've never lived a liable lifestyle. You act like you ain't never done anything wrong. But there's some people in the building like me who can admit that your flaws could have affected your future, that your decisions could have derailed your destiny, that your proclivities could have affected your promise. But you ought to help me give God praise praise because what the Lord tells you is that even though you have some flaws in your yesterday you have a future for tomorrow can there be, can there somebody in this house help me give God crazy praise right there and just tell your neighbor neighbor my future looks bright even though I've messed up I'm looking forward to my future because God got the wonderful things in my future and deuce whenever you come to church and you praise God not for your former but for your future it confuses the enemy Enemy because the enemy knows where you are now. The enemy knows how jacked up your right now is. The enemy knows how jacked up your current situation is. The enemy thinks you ought to have a private pity party. But when you come to church and you tell the Lord, I'm going to bless you, not for the former, but for the future. When you come to church and put those hands together and give God crazy praise, not for what is, but for what is to come, it confuses the enemy. Because the enemy think you ought to be having a pity party. But instead of having a pity party, you're having a praise party. Can somebody give God crazy praise? Not for your right now, but for your not yet. But wait, but wait, but wait. Just because you don't want to be selfish, you ought to praise God for your neighbor's future. In fact, do me one more favor. We're going to leave them alone for now. Just look at your neighbor and neighbor, I'm praising God for your future. I'm praising God for your children and your grandchildren. I'm praising God for your husband and your wife. Come on, I'm praising God for your job. I'm praising God for your career. I'm praising God for the new car, the new house. I'm praising God for the new boot. I'm praising God for the new things, the things that God has prepared for you. Because I believe you've been too faithful not to have a good future. I believe you've been too honest not to have a good future. And because I believe a future is coming, I'm not going to just praise God for my future. I'm praising God for yours too. God, 
God's favor. God's favor. Watch this. God's favor is going to rebuild my future. Tell so my neighbor, my future looks bright. My future. Gosh, I'm trying to leave this point, but I believe that somebody came in with the wrong disposition. S -s somebody came in here with your head hung down, kind of low. But you need me to speak to you. This is not in my sermon. This is for you. You need me to tell you that your future looks good. I feel something pushing me right here. You, you, here it is. You're sad and you despondent because things haven't worked out. You're mad because you make mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. Oh, but I hear the Spirit of the Lord telling me, you better lift up your head. Oh, ye doors, be you lifted up every last thing. And the King of glory will come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. Who is the King of glory? You ought to give God crazy praise. In fact, I wish you just tell your neighbor, neighbor, I cried my last cry over my yesterday why? Because my future looks okay, Let me go, let me move, let me move. sit down, let me move God, we, we gotta go he, he said number one, I'm giving you favor and, and this favor, number one, uh, is going to rebuild uh, your future, pat yourself on the chest and says my future is being rebuilt, he's going to rebuild my future this favor watch this this favor verse 11 and 12 is rebuilding my future oh but God somebody's gonna go crazy right here look at verse 13 because this favor is not only rebuilding my future uh, but this favor is reversing things fast Okay, I told you, I told you, that's one going. Uh, this favor, this favor uh, is reversing things fast. In fact, just lean over and tell your neighbor, it's turning around real quick. It's turning around. Oh, you didn't do it like you really meant it. Tell him it's turning around really quick. Uh, it's reversing things real fast. Uh, you see, it don't take God long to do nothing. Uh, it don't take God long to change nothing. In fact, I'm talking to somebody right now. I sense a shifting in the building. God, God uh, oh God, God, God is turning stuff around right now. Uh, you thought it wasn't going to turn. You thought it wasn't going to move. You thought nothing was going to happen, but I came to tell you today, it's going to turn real quick. It ain't going to take six months, ain't going to take six years, ain't going to take ten years. I sense God doing it right now. I wish you'd tell your neighbor, neighbor, right now, right now. Tell him right now. Come on, tell him right now. He's doing it right now. He's doing it at this moment. He's doing it at this second. He's doing it right now. Okay, um, um, uh, let, let me unpack it. Let, can I unpack it? Because that, that, that didn't get you. That didn't get you. So look at verse 13. Uh, it, it's going to happen so fast. I'm in verse 13. Uh, it's going to happen so fast, Ludens, until three things are going to happen right here in verse 13. It's going to happen so fast. Can I just give it all to you real quick? I'll come back and, and, and unpack it. Uh, it it's going to happen so fast. Number one, you won't be able to control your belief. You won't be able to catch your breath. Then you won't be able to count your blessing. It's right here uh, in verse number 13. Uh, number one, uh, you won't be able to control your belief because the text says your head uh, is going to swim. God got a mind-blowing, mind-boggling blessing with your name on it. God got a blessing so big, uh, it's going to blow your mind. In fact, can I tell you how you're going to look when he gives it to you? You're going to just put your hands on your hip and just start shaking your head. You're going to look at the house and just stand in the yard and just start shaking your head. You can just walk up to the car and just lay your hands on the car and just start shaking your head. You're going to get to the doctor's report and get your x-rays back and just look at the x-ray and just start shaking your head. You're going to stand before the judge and the judge is going to say, case dismissed. And you're going to just start shaking your head. Am I talking to somebody in this house who believe with all of your heart you serve the kind of God that can give you a mind-blowing blessing? Tell your neighbor, my head is, my, my head is swimming, my head is swimming. I, I can't, I can't, I, I can't control my belief. I don't believe. I, I can't believe that God did it for me. I can't believe that God turned it around. I can't believe it happened to me like this. I, I can't believe my credit didn't afford it. My salary couldn't afford it. My background didn't prepare me for it. I, I just can't believe it. In fact, it's so unbelievable. All I can say is, but God. It's so unbelievable. My testimony is, but God. When people say, how did you get it? I say, it was God. When people say, how can you afford it? I say, it was God. Because 
because it happened so fast. Watch it. Can I go a little bit farther? It happened so fast. I, I won't be able to control my belief. But then secondly, in verse 13, it's going to happen so fast. I, I can't catch my breath. The text says you won't be able to keep up with it. In other words, as soon as I'm about to get juiced to this one, he's going to open up another door. In other words, do I have any business owners in the building? This text means as soon as you get one contract, you can't even handle that contract. Another contract is going to come. As soon as you get one opportunity, before you get used to that one, another opportunity is going to come. I guess they ain't got no help in this house. As soon as one good check comes, before you cash that check, another check comes in the mail. Before you get that rebate cash, another rebate is going to come. Can you give God a crazy praise? Because he can give you the kind of blessing that you can't even catch your breath. And because, Carl, I may be out of breath, I got to start getting in shape. Somebody ought to take it just a run around the church. I'm trying to get in shape. I'm trying to get ready for the blessing that God has with my name on it. But, but, but watch this. I, I'm in verse 13. It, it's going to happen fast. Can I tell you how fast? It, it's going to be so fast. Number one, I, I can't control my belief. Gosh, I hope I don't hurt, bust a spleen. It's going to happen so fast. I, I, I can't catch my breath. But it's going to happen so fast. I, I, I can't even count the blessing. I'm in verse 13. It, the text says just e everywhere I look. I wish y'all would read the text. E everywhere I look, I'm just being blessed. I'm in public on so aisle seven. Somebody just put money. I'm just blessed. I, 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 I walk into Home Depot and get blessed. I walk into Lowe's and get blessed. Sit down in Piccadilly's and I get blessed. Eat at, help me talk. Eat, eat at the house of pancakes and get blessed. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm, I'm blessed when I'm coming. I'm blessed when I'm going. I wish you would tell your neighbor, neighbor, just bless, bless, bless. I, I can't count all the blessings. In fact, I got so many blessings that when I go to sleep at night, I don't count sheep to put me to sleep. I just start naming my blessings to, to help me. Am I talking to somebody in this house? Can you Put your hands together and make the devil real mad and let the devil know I've got so many blessings coming my way. I can't even count my blessings. Sit down well. It's, 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 it's 112. We got to go. Can I keep you to 120? Can I keep you to 120? I promise, 120, I'm, I'm done, 120, 120, I'm done. There's 112, give me, give, give me a few minutes. He, he said, no, no, not 130, I got 120. He, 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 this favor, this favor is going to rebuild my future. This, this favor is going to reverse things fast. But look at verse 14 and 15. This favor is going to reproduce good fortune. Now, now, you got to catch this. You got to catch this. He, he says, because I'll make everything right again. Um, um, my people will rebuild ruined cities. My people will plant vineyards and drink good wine. They'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. I'll plant them, plant them on their own land and they'll never gosh 122 they'll never be uprooted from the land I give them let, let, let me unpack it um, um, when, when, when the children of Israel watch this went into captivity uh, um, um, the one thing they lost was they lost something that God ain't making no more they lost their land. And, 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 and when they lost their land, they became indigent servants to somebody else. They, 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 they lost their land. And, and, and because they lost their land, everything they did, watch this, they did with the permission or for the pleasure of somebody else. Listen, I didn't say this earlier, so y'all better, better catch this. A everything they're doing, they're doing with permission or for the pleasure of somebody else. When they worked, it was for the pleasure of somebody else. What they ate, they ate with the permission of somebody else. What they 
produce. They produced it for the pleasure of somebody else. What they purchased, they purchased with the permission, y'all ain't feeling me, of somebody else. Somebody else was always deciding and dictating what they can have and when they can have it. Somebody dictated their ceiling. Somebody decided and determined their destiny. Somebody else decided when they can eat and what they can eat and how often they could eat. Somebody decided when to work and where to work and how much to work. Somebody decided how much you can make from the job that you're working on. And my brothers and my sisters, uh, that wasn't obviously the way God intended for it to be. Because when you read the text, uh, the text says, I'll make everything right again. Well, if he got to make things right, that means that something is wrong right now. And so if I'm working for somebody else and if I'm producing and can't eat it when I want to eat it, if I'm getting it but can't spend it the way I want to spend it, if I'm laboring for it but somebody else got to dictate to me when I can do it, obviously that's not really what God wants for my life. So what God says is I'm going to make it right. I'm going to reposition your life that whatever you do now, you're going to enjoy it for yourself. I'm going to give you your own field. And when you get your own feel you can work what you want to work and when you get stuff from your own feel you can enjoy it for you I know some of y'all can't really appreciate that because you're so used to working for somebody else you can't see yourself working for yourself you're so used to punching the clock you can't see yourself owning the clock you're so used to working in the field you can't see yourself owning the field oh but I'm talking to somebody in this house God has already birthed a vision in you he's already put a business in you he's already they're giving you an idea and God told me to tell you in the next season of your life uh, he's going to put favor on your life uh, and what that favor is going to do is uh, it's going to produce some good fortune uh, in fact lean over and give your neighbor a high five uh, and tell him neighbor he's producing some stuff uh, he's getting ready to set me up uh, I'm going to be the head and not the tail uh, I'm going to be the lender and not the borrower I'm going to be the head and not the tail uh, I'm going to be above and not beneath uh, and I'm going to do it not by my own fortune, but I be good. I'm going to do it because he's putting favor on my life. Turn to somebody beside you. Look him or her in the face and declare favor. Come on, just say favor, favor, favor. And if they want to know how did you get the favor, I got my favor because I was faithful. I got my favor because I was faithful. Well, Pastor Jackson, what were you faithful over? I wasn't faithful over nothing big. I wasn't faithful over nothing maker. I was faithful uh, over a few things and because I was faithful uh, over a few things uh, some kind of way uh, the God I serve, he made me he ruled over me because uh, I was faithful uh, over a few things. Uh, the God I serve flipped the script uh, and he made me uh, rule over many. Well Pastor Jackson uh, how long must I be faithful? Uh, the Bible Bible declares, be faithful unto death and he will, he'll give you a crown of life. And I don't know who I'm talking to, uh, but I came to tell your neighbor uh, favor uh, is on my life. Uh, in fact, look at your neighbor uh, in the face uh, for the last time uh, and tell them, neighbor, uh, I'm walking in favor. Uh, I'm talking in favor. Uh, I'm driving in favor. Uh, I'm operating uh, in favor. Uh, and if you know you got it, uh, give God the praise. Uh, if you know you got Got it? Give him the glory. If you know you got it, stand on your feet and open up your mouth and declare God favor. And by tap three people and say favor, 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 favor on your family. Come on, favor on your you ain't doing it. Favor on your children. Favor on your finances. Favor on your relationship. Favor on your health. Favor Favor when you come, favor when you go, favor in the city, favor in the field, favor on your job, favor when you come. And the church say favor, favor on our 
church. Favor on every preacher. Favor every minister. Favor every deacon. Favor every deaconess. Favor every choir member. Favor every usher. Favor every business owner. Shout favor. Favor on the neighborhood. Favor in the state. Come on, put your hands up. Come on. Come on, put your hands up. 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 But the favor, it only comes to the faithful it only comes I'm done it's 120 I'm done it only comes to the faithful it only comes Gwen only comes Marsha only comes Diana only comes only comes so Mother Washington only comes Fernanda it only comes Mom it only comes Deuce it only comes Tremu only comes Olga only comes to the faithful and favor follows faithfulness. That when you're faithful, listen, you ain't got to do nothing special. Just be faithful. Ladies, you ain't got to sleep around. You don't have to compromise. Listen. Listen, listen, listen. You hear ladies say, you know what? I got to do something special. You know, me and the heart to come by. No, listen. You, you live holy. You be holy. You be faithful. You be faithful. You be faithful. You, you be faithful. Favor. Talking right now. Some business owner. Every business owner, raise your hand. Every business owner. Every bit. If you own the business, raise, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Listen. Listen. Business owners. Just be faithful. Listen. Be faithful. Just be faithful. It's hard out there. It's hard. I don't know what you do. It's hard. It's competition out there. You don't have to lower your standards. Don't do anything shady. You honor God. You, you, you tithe from your business. Hear me. Tithe from your business and ask God to bless your business. You be faithful. Oh, you be faithful with your school. You be faithful. Favor will follow faithfulness. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. You be faithful. There's somebody right now who don't, who's looking for a job. In between blessings. Pastor, I need a job real bad. I need a job. I mean, I need a bad. But you see, you you need a job real bad? I mean, you mean really bad? I'm serious. You mean you really need a job? Yeah. Are you faithful to God? Are you, I mean, honestly, don't fool me now. You, are you, have you been faithful to God? Honestly. Say it again. You're trying to be. Listen. Listen. I need you to be faithful to God. No, no try. That's like almost pregnant. No. I need you to be faithful to God. I need you to make, listen, in this season, right now, while you're in between jobs, I need you to say, Lord, I need a job. And I mean, I promise you, I'm going to be faithful. I, I promise you, God, this is not lip service because God knows when we're giving him lip service. But if you are really, on, are you really sincere? Are you really sincere? Are you really sincere? Come forward. Lynn, get her name. We're going to get you a job. Get her name. There's enough people right now. What you do? What does she do? What does she do? What do you do? What do you do? Say it again. You're a bookkeeper. You're a bookkeeper. Amen. Give her your name. You're a bookkeeper. You're good with accounting. You're licensed. You have a certificate. You're not licensed. You have a certificate. Okay. And you're skilled at what you do. Okay. No record. Nothing like that. You're good. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. Amen. You're good. Listen. You all right? Listen. There's enough people here that hear you saying you're a bookkeeper and you're good at what you do. You How many years you've been doing it? Over 25 years. You're a licensed bookkeeper. Your certificate. Certificate of bookkeeping. Right? And you're good at what you do. You're great at what you do. And you're going to be faithful to God. You're going to be faithful. You promise you're going to be faithful. Amen. Any accountants in here? Anybody working in the accounting field? Amen. 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 Where? Help me. Help me. You, sir? Amen. What do you do? You count? Are they hiring on your job? Can you, can you, can I come, can you come over here and get in your name? 
Chris. Amen. I'm sorry. Oh, here. Amen. Come on. Amen. Speak to her. Jerry, her card. She gave me her card. Jerry, Gary. Amen. She owns an employment agency. Amen. 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 We're gonna get you. We're gonna get you a job. Get your number. Get your number. Y'all, come on. Get right here. Amen. And we're gonna get you a job because you promise you're gonna be. Fra- Didn't you promise me that? Amen. Come on. Can y'all give God praise? We're gonna hook you up. In two weeks, you're gonna be working. Get you a job because favor always follows. And somebody right now, you own your own business. You need a bookkeeper. Amen. It's tax time. You need someone to help you. Amen. We, we, th- this is how the righteous do it. This is how the kingdom do it. Because listen, that's just an example that if you are faithful, some kind of way, Deuce, I, I believe it, I believe it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But I want to give somebody the opportunity to, to be faithful to God.